How's the royal family? I pray that everyone is doing well. Well, my royal family, I've been wanting to do this video for a long time. And I was shut down for a bit, but it did give me an opportunity to watch some of the Democratic Party's convention. And it was quite obvious the direction that they are headed. Um, they're doing what they normally do, use black women. And I mean, they brought out numerous black women and it didn't, you know, the royal family, we feel, you know, we not shallow. And I didn't, I couldn't connect with anything but phoniness. And that now that um, Kamala Harris is the VIP pick, mainly the energy is on her. And the things that I see is quite disrespectful with the Democratic Party continue to do because we know that they have used black women to the fullest and they're going to keep doing that. And it is obvious, obvious, pay attention to what was not said, pay attention to what was not represented. And um, they have totally dismissed talking about anything when it comes to reparations. And they're taking a gamble because trust and believe behind the scenes those things were thrown on the table and so how they're looking at um, all of this is we're supposed to fully dismiss Kamala Harris record and I live in Kamala country I know the record well um, and she got a problem with the black vote. Oh yeah, big time. And um, her record is, and will continue to be atrocious. Let's not lose sight that Biden and Kamala both have an atrocious record when it comes to the royal family. So locking up their energies, they are letting all of us know we will continue to have an atrocious record when it comes to mainly incarcerating our kings. This is quite obvious. They don't have a good relationship with the black man, but they're gambling. Let's dismiss all of that. And now they're gonna make her the face of, and that unquote supposed to be our reparations. And how this thing is going, if Trump, becomes the president, they're going to blame us as usual because we didn't get up off our fannies and go vote. And you see all the things that Trump continue to do to the African-American community. No, 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 no. Trump ain't did nothing to us. This stuff has already been laid out and stuff. Trump is, been, is very blunt and you, and he wears his emotions out and everything and he is exposing white supremacy quite effectively he's tearing down babylon quite effectively and these people have all these thoughts it don't matter what party but it's like why you got to be so blunt so then they put the burden um on black folks in general but they're gonna con doing what they're doing shove the black men in the corner and put his woman up front um, and let they self continue to be pimped out. So as we can go on this journey, my royal family, let's get into this first video. Now this video um, that I'm going to play, keep on your frontal lobe, this video was done in um, 2017. Cheslin Figaro is a former Bernie Sanders national staffer and Jamu Green, former candidate for DNC chair and a Fox News contributor. Welcome. 
uh, to both of you. Good to have you both here tonight. Um, powerful words last night from, from Charles Barkley, Jamu. Was he right? I think in many ways Charles Barkley was spot on. I also think that this isn't a new conversation for the Democratic Party. We've had conversations going on for decades about Democrats showing up in the last weeks before an election at churches mm -hmm. and expecting to get the support of black voters. But in this hyper-polarized, hyper-attentive um, uh, politics that we're living, this is a real opportunity. And I think we're seeing some results because today, Chairman Tom Perez from the DNC said very specifically that black women are the backbone of the Democratic Party. It happens to be one of the things that was almost quote for quote from my campaign. And I think that if that can actually be transferred into yeah. very specific policy prescriptions, then the Democrats will continue to see victories that, like did, we saw. Did they have your back? Did the Clintons have your back, Jimmy, when you ran uh, for DNC chair? Because you've given, given a lot uh, to the Clintons. Did, were they there for you? When I ran for DNC chair, Hillary Clinton was still dealing with her loss and I certainly did not seek out her endorsement. I didn't seek out the endorsement from anyone because I, I wanted to run as an outsider candidate. I, I know that uh, Teslin has a, a, a really strong point to make about why wasn't Hillary for wasn't Hillary for me for there for me. I don't think What's that's the question? point. I think I, the point is Tess, Tess, she's Tess, been there and was there for black women in a way that you yeah. saw their Tess savvy voters. That's why they voted in such record numbers for her yeah. as Tess, well. Tess, Tess, your thoughts? You know, well, I, I disagree, you know, but I do agree with some of what Jimmy was saying, but I don't think Jimmy should have had to seek out her endorsement. You know, uh, it didn't take uh, Hillary Clinton seeking out Jimmy, you know, to ask for her support while she was on the ground. You know, everybody today is talking about black girl magic, and I really want to know if the Democrat Party is so in love with black girl magic, then I'm looking forward to see all of these fairy godmothers and fairy godfathers to go down and actually get black women elected. Like when you talk about Stacey Abrams, who's running uh, in Georgia for governor, when you talk about Connie Johnson, who's running uh, in Oklahoma for governor. Democrats have yet to elect a black woman statewide. And again, they did ignore uh, Jamu's campaign when she clearly said that black women are the backbone. So everyone on, on Facebook is saying and, and Twitter, you know, we saved you again. We saved the world again. And at the end of the day, what are we truly getting out of the deal? Let's do some polling on, let's see how many black consultants were hired, how much black media was engaged, how many organizers were hired, how many actually got paid. Let me ask you this. You know, you know, it, mm -hmm. When you look at sort of Democrat philosophy, has it done what it should do to raise up people in the black community, to raise up people in the poor community, as Charles Barkley pointed out? You know, there have been movements against, from the NAACC, NAACP, against charter schools in inner cities. So, you know, that's my question for you. Um, is that, can conservatives do more to encourage the African-American vote in, in their elections? Jamil? Well, I think if you look at what Doug Jones said last night in his acceptance speech, he talked about the Children's Health Insurance Program, and that's a very important program to those savvy black voters in Alabama and all over the country. And so there are issues that have really hit home for Democratic voters yeah, in the black community. But there are other things that Democrats can do. I think they should absolutely get rid of the first in the nation status of Iowa and New Hampshire, because that doesn't center black women. I agree with Tesla. We have to invest in women, black women who are running for office. Stacey Abrams is a perfect example. And, and we need to see right. these very specific prescriptions I funded. But I want to give Tesla one chance to respond, and I'm, and I'm out of time. Tesla, last thought. You know, I don't give anybody a pass. You know, Republicans can certainly do more, but my main concern is the Democrat Party because those are the ones that come to our churches. Those are the ones that make the promises. Those are the ones that pass out the church fans, you know, for our votes. I would love to see both parties do more, which is why I'm independent. But at the end of the day, if we continue to be keep being the mistress and keep allowing us to be a one-night stand, which happens when they come in the 11th hour, we're going to see more of the same and not actually be valued for our vote. Thank you so much, ladies. Tesla, the that was powerful with the last part of what that sister said, she resonated truth. But what was not said even on her end? Nothing was said about the black man. You see how they getting down? See, they didn't pump this black woman up where she still independent, you know? Got that independent type of thinking. There's nothing wrong with that. But I need my man.
I can't do nothing without my man. I ain't going to front. I'm powerful. I'm real powerful. But I ain't powerful without my man. I need him. Oh, yes, true royal do. Don't be fooled by the fire and passion in my voice. I know my place as a black woman. I know that I'm a queen. And I know that I must first and foremost submit to our creator. And I know that the leadership, the leadership also must submit to the creator. And then I know I'm supposed to submit to my man. But see, these feminists then got our heads so mixed up with submit that you, 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 it, it's like you thinking of yourself as a dog. See, we got, we all screwed up. You know, we need to be up out of Esau's world. We need our man. And this shit that they pulling, um, when they had this um, convention, they just dismissed the black man all the way out. You can't do nothing without. We need that seed. See, these people full of shit. And see, they gambling. They gambling. They gambling. Oh, yeah, they gambling. Now, all of a sudden, we supposed to dismiss everything Campbell then did and all this black girl magic. They showing all these damn commercials and all these little black girls is all um, uh, supposed to be enamored with her and all that. She don't got no good record. She screwed her way to the top. You, did you explain that to those little girls? No, nah, you ain't going to do that. We, you know, they're going to find that out later. And you're going to keep doing what you're doing. But this is nothing more than a slap in the face to our men. I've always been like this. And no, this is me. I can remember talking like this in my very early 20s. And people was, other Black women, believe it or not, was trying to sway me. Sway me. You can't sway true royal. No. Just keep living true royal and you see what's really going on. Somebody got to speak up for our kings, but you want to show him in the most atrocious way possible. And putting on the mind, on the mindset, on the frontal lobe of these impressionable our impressionable royal daughters thinking, I don't need him. All I got to do is vote for the Democratic Party and everything going to fall in place. All right. They get what they want and then they done with your ass quickly and swiftly. Oh, trust and believe. I know exactly what I'm talking about. So they very disingenuous. And then they want to put the burden on us because you got that that demon up there. Well, y'all demons too, because y'all come all from the same. All right? All of y'all come from the same. Them Caucasoid Mountains. That's your brother. You don't like what your brother's saying. You don't like what he how he exposing all of this. So there ain't no difference between y'all, because, oh, this is the nice ones, good cop and bad cop. Uh-uh. Do y'all know the history of the Democratic Party? KKK? Do y'all know that? Some people need to do they do they work. So let me keep going on because I'm on a tirade at this point. So uh, I want the royal family to listen to this article. As voters, black women are important to Democrats. As candidates, where's the support? The votes of black women propelled Democrats to historic victories in the 2018 midterm elections and helped elect the most racially diverse Congress in U.S. history. And their votes will be critical to helping Democrats win elections in 2020 in North Carolina. But some of the most prominent black women Democrats in this year's elections are running without support from the party's leaders or donors. That's most evident in the U.S. Senate race, where the candidate who wants to be North Carolina's first black female senator, Erica Smith, has accused the top Senate Democrat of not wanting a black woman to run. Democratic groups have spent more than $12 million helping rival Cal Cunningham, a white man, while Smith's own biggest source of financial help is a Republican super PAC trying to make the primary more difficult for Democrats. Meanwhile, in Democratic primaries for the 2nd and 6th congressional districts, both redrawn to favor Democrats, black women candidates are facing steep odds against well-funded candidates who are white women. 
North Carolina has elected black women to the U.S. House and the state Supreme Court, but it's never had a black female senator or a black female member of the Council of State, the group of executives elected statewide that include the governor, attorney general and treasurer. Black women, in particular, are asked to show up at the polls, asked to deliver votes and victories to people across the spectrum, but no one is asking us to be on the ballots. That's a grave injustice, said Rhonda Fox, a candidate in North Carolina's redrawn 6th district. It is one of the biggest questions we are going to have as a Democratic Party, post this election cycle. Nationally, there are 47 women of color serving in Congress and just 16 in statewide executive office, according to the Center for American Women in Politics. Voting Power, Fundraising Challenge Of the 2.5 million Democratic registered voters in North Carolina, more than 700,000 are black women minus 27.7% of all Democrats in the state. African Americans account for 46.8% of all registered Democrats in the state. By contrast, there are 15,857 black women registered as Republicans in the state, less than 1% of the more than 2 million registered Republicans, according to data from the State Board of Elections. A study of the 2018 midterm elections found that black women candidates, on average, raised the least amount of money, less than half of what white women raised. It is something North Carolina candidates have experienced firsthand. The biggest challenge is raising money. We usually represent less affluent communities. The network differs, said Linda Coleman, who won the 2018 Democratic primary in the 2nd District against a better-funded white male opponent, but lost in the general election. We're expected to do the same job. The money drives the message, so we obviously have a very difficult time navigating that terrain. There's a racial gap and a gender gap for black women. Senate race. Smith, a state senator, reported raising a little more than $233,000 for the 2020 election through February 12, according to FEC reports. Cunningham, a corporate lawyer and Army veteran, raised more than $4.5 million through February 12. Cunningham's campaign has been boosted by millions in outside spending. VoteVets.org and VoteVets Action Fund have spent more than $7 million in support of Cunningham. Carolina Blue, a super PAC founded in February, has spent more than $4 million for Cunningham, who has secured a slew of in-state endorsements. Smith's campaign has gotten a boost from the Faith and Power PAC, a group funded by the Senate Leadership Fund, a super PAC allied with Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. The Faith and Power PAC has spent nearly $3 million on the race, most of it in support of Smith. She has disavowed the Political Action Committee, saying this entity is not authorized to represent our views and positions. The Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee, which endorsed Cunningham, as it did in his failed 2010 Senate bid, has also spent in connection with the campaign. Smith has been deeply critical of national Democrats, including Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer, for picking sides in the primary. Smith, who sought the endorsement of national Democrats, accused Schumer of not wanting a black woman to run for Senate in North Carolina. The DSCC has consistently cited Cunningham's fundraising abilities in its endorsement of him. It was not successful then and they haven't been successful so far, Smith said of the DSCC's endorsement of Cunningham in 2010 and 2020. It's insane to continue to do the same things over and over again and expect a different result. Nationwide, just two African-American women have ever been elected to the Senate, Carol Mosley Braun of Illinois and Kamala Harris of California. Smith said black women are the most faithful voting bloc of the Democratic Party and dismissed the premise that black women have struggled to gain footing in elections, pointing to her own electoral success and that of Coleman. Smith has won two school board races and three North Carolina Senate races. I know how to win. It's message over money every time, she said. Money doesn't vote. People do. Smith, a former high school teacher and engineer, has secured endorsements from progressive groups as well as the State Employees Association of North Carolina. Her platform is more progressive than Cunningham's, endorsing Medicare for all. The two are competing with three other Democrats, including Trevor Fuller, an African-American man and a Mecklenburg County Commissioner, to take on Senator Tom Tillis. NC2 House Race Monica Johnson Osler, an elected member of the Wake County School Board, has raised $95,000 in her second district race. Deborah Ross, a former state representative who lost her 2016 Senate bid to Republican Senator Richard Burr, raised $301,000, which includes a $55,000 transfer from her Senate account. Andy Terrell and Ollie Nelson, who is African American, are also in the Democratic race. Ross has been endorsed by the NC Association of Educators, CWA Political Action, the NC State AFL CIO, and the State Employees Association of North Carolina which also endorsed Johnson Osler. Johnson Osler said she had encouragement from others to enter the race. 
but that support has not translated into big fundraising dollars. She entered the race last year, before the district was redrawn to include just parts of Wake County. How can we actually change what representation looks like if we're not able to crack open established donors? She said. I question when people say they believe we should have reputable representation. If that's what we say we want, people who look like me, are we really willing to invest in ensuring that we have that representation? Johnson Osler, 45, is also the executive director of the North Carolina Coalition Against Sexual Assault. She said she has tapped the well dry with her personal network and is not a candidate with deep ties to financially well-connected donors. But she has used other networks. Johnson Osler brought in fellow Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Sisters and incumbent Congresswoman Terry Sewell of Alabama, Frederica Wilson of Florida and Eddie Bernice Johnson of Texas for a fundraising event in Raleigh in February. As a black woman, I'm not coming in with the same net worth or network. In order to get the representation that reflects the party, we have to do something different to get those people elected, Johnson Osler said. This party lives and breathes on black women showing up. Black women are still absolutely holding the Democratic Party together by showing up to vote in large numbers. NC6 House Race Fox reported raising $75,215 in her race. Kathy Manning, who ran unsuccessfully in 2018 against Republican Rep. Ted Budd, has raised $532,983. It can no longer be just because you have X amount of money raised or X amount of capital. That's what makes you a stellar and great candidate. That doesn't work in 2020, Fox said. We have to recalibrate what constitutes a successful candidate. Fox, 36, graduated from UNC Chapel Hill and George Washington University Law School. She was chief of staff for Representative Alma Adams, a Charlotte Democrat. Fox also worked for several campaigns and Senator Kirsten Gillibrand as well as a lawyer for private firms. Gillibrand endorsed Fox. There are five candidates in the Democratic primary, including three black men, former Winston-Salem City Council member and State Representative Derwin Montgomery, former State Representative Ed Haynes Jr. and Bruce Davis. Fox has outraised all three, a group that works to elect progressive African-American women, Higher Heights for America PAC, has endorsed Smith, Fox and Johnson Osler. Other congressional candidates. Patricia Timmons Goodson is the lone Democratic candidate running in the 8th District. Timmons Goodson, who became the first African-American woman on the state Supreme Court in 2006, is running against incumbent Republican Rep. Richard Hudson. Timmons Goodson has not filed a quarterly campaign finance report with the FAC. Hudson, seeking his fifth term in office, has raised more than $1.5 million for the 2020 election. In the 9th District, Cynthia Wallace is one of four Democrats running to take on incumbent Republican Rep. Dan Bishop. Wallace, an executive with the Financial Services Committee, has raised $15,214 in the race, more than any of her Democratic competitors. Statewide races. State Representative Yvonne Lewis Holly is one of the African American women in the State House. She represents part of Raleigh and Wake County, one of the state's two largest metro areas. She is in her fourth term. But in her campaign for Lieutenant Governor, she said, we're starting from scratch. We're starting with grassroots donors. A lot of people who donated to me haven't donated before. Holly said a woman at church who gave her $3 had never donated to a campaign before. I took that $3 like it was $300, Holly said. It's a lot of smaller donations, and people who are just beginning to be aware of the importance of making this investment. We don't often have a lot of expendable cash in the black community. I take more seriously their donations. Holly said the African American women running for higher office than the state legislature are all campaigning in different races with different chances. What they have in common, though, she said, is the inability to raise the funds that white candidates raise. Holly said that's because some people don't know them as well or think they are long-shot candidates, among other reasons. I don't know what it is. I don't think there's a problem in the party, I just think people donate to people they know, or people they think can win, she said. The black community has the network, it's not just about the money. Holly isn't the only African-American candidate in the lieutenant governor primary. The others are men. Republican Mark Robinson and three Democrats, Rep. Chaz Beasley, Alan Thomas, and Ron Newton. So there's a chance that the next lieutenant governor could be an African-American, one of several elections that could change who sits at the now all-white Council of State table. In another, Wake County Commissioner Jessica Holmes is unopposed in the Democratic primary for Labor Commissioner. Former State Rep. Pearl Burris Floyd is among the Republican candidates for the same position. Both are African-Americans. One possible solution? Democrat Stacey Abrams, who lost a close gubernatorial race in Georgia in 2018 and is being mentioned a possible vice presidential candidate in 2020, 
said passing campaign finance reform is critical to setting a level playing field for women candidates of color. The answer is to fix the infrastructure, Abrams told McClatchy, so that the candidates who win are not the candidates with the deepest pockets but the ones with the deepest message. Next article. Oh, uh, let me take this down. So, as we can see, as we heard in this article, black women that have any type of position in that political rim when it comes in the Democratic Party um, and have demonst also demonstrated their loyalty to the Democratic Party, they still have a issue raising money. So that further tells me Nancy Pelosi is not helping the black woman raise money because she is the number one in raising money for the Democratic Party. I have even noticed that Nancy Pelosi ain't said shit that I can recall about Kamala Harris. Just wanted to put that in our in your frontal lobe as well. So they're showing their sheer disdain. You know, they only fuck with you just a little bit. And then when it gets closer to crunch time, you know, they want that black woman to get out there on that pavement. And black men do vote. They do vote. They really do. They get out and vote. They vote just as equally as the black woman. But see, now black folks is looking at they vote quite differently. You know, you know, they want to keep studying ADOS, you know, and I keep harping on the fact what they did in July of this year, making sure Israel get an additional 9 million, which was 19 million a day. All right. And that state is about the size of New Jersey. You know, I mean, just all of this is just all fucked up. But let's continue focusing on Campbell's and really Biden's problem. A black male problem. How you doing, Tim Black? He used to let me speak on his channel. I, sometimes I go over there. I still speak on his channel from time to time. I just love looking at that, how that looks. It's a problem. And we know it's a problem. And so it is the black woman's duty and responsibilities, the one who understand what the hell is going on, that you don't exclude our leadership, the head, how things were put in place by our father. So they're still doing the same thing. And I resent that fact. I really do. And that's why you don't partake in any of this. You got to look at this stuff spiritually because what's going to go down is what's going to go down. Wasting your time voting and all of that, you don't supposed to even partake in the system. But there are people that vote. So I have to speak on it to point out even if a person decide to vote um, just to give my perspective because I'm not talking down to anyone. We know what the hell is going on. But how the hell you going to dismiss the black man and we going to override that and then once we get what we want from the black woman, we going to keep doing what we doing to your black man, to your father, your brother, your lover or whoever, your son, your nephew. They're going to keep that on the agenda because they are afraid of the inevitable. And the inevitable is right before the entire world's eyes. We're watching a kingdom die. Who is left last to stand up? The black man and his family. But, you know, they want a little extra time to keep being in their unquote heaven and we should not be feeding into that at all you got to realize what you are feeding into and what is the results of what you feeding into we're still seeing black men getting shot now they want to play a game with a, a knife the brother didn't have on him these type of games they don't have a clue what to do but take to take, tell that black bitch to go out there and vote and dismiss her man like he ain't around. Where are these babies coming from? Because trust and believe, a lot of them black women are with black men. 
You cannot dismiss this at all. So I will be harping on the fact. And Campbell's fake ass, she got a problem. She can't stand. She disdain black men. And she will always disdain them. And she is showing this system what she is willing to do. We already know what Biden is on. We already know that with his rickety ass. But then you got to look at how this overall country is looking at that, that, uh, that is that do vote and don't like her. They like, Oh, it's a possibility he'll die. And then she become the president. And you're going to still get the same results because we, 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 we have seen this over and over again and see, they have made us savvy in all of this. So we have, all of us got decisions to make because all of this was going down is biblical. I'm speaking to the chosen ones because on judgment day, our father going to come down on us. Why did you keep feeding into this system? But you know what I put in the word. You lacked faith. Knowing what you know. You lacked faith. So don't feed your energy into a system that we all know is dying before our eyes. They are becoming the tail. So what you feeding into? To prolong it? And then on top of that, you want to dismiss my kings? No, I stand shoulder to shoulder with my kings to hell with this system. I'll leave it right there, my royal family. So render your voice with your beautiful divine words. And as always, my royal family, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your support. And with that said, Ashe.